everybody, welcome back to Brain Leak episode 10. We're in the double digits now, baby. I worry that you forgot what the name of the podcast was for a second. Welcome back to Brain Land. Um, <laughs> brain uh, Land. <laughs> brain Land. Oh, if we made a theme park, it would be Brain Land. Brain Land. That and everyone, everyone, every attraction gives you a brain leak or a concussion. <laughs> every attraction gives you an aneurysm. <laughs> Welcome back to Concussion Land. I think that's a joke in The Simpsons. I was talking to Jocelyn and I was like, I want to figure out some fun videos that, that we can film when Sean is here uh, for Brain Leak. And we were trying to think of like the most American stuff that we can do. And it was always just like, yeah, but I don't really want to go and like shoot a bunch of guns for a video. But that's like the, obviously the most American thing. But like, what's the like American gauntlet? Let's go up to like Alaska and go elk hunting with oh. bows and arrows. And we have to drink the elk's blood. Yeah, go Bleed. full liver king. Mm -hmm. Cut out the liver. It's like we'll bring a- Go full liver king, so become a liar. <sighs> Dude, we've been doing that for our entire careers. <laughs> there's true. there's no way everything we do is 100% <laughs> truthful. <laughs> I don't even have legs. I don't even have legs. No, just in this chair, just. Nope. Shitting and a pissing. Uh, shitting and a pissing. I was going to say that we should do an ice bath together. Not at the same time, but like, because I've never done ice baths before. And I feel like you have because of the, <laughs> because of your training. Because of my training. Uh -huh. Navy SEALs, 12 years. <laughs> you also live in a climate where it's more fun to do. Because when you get out of it, you don't, or you're not still cold. <laughs> yeah. We can do it because Justin has a, a a nice bath. Yeah, a, a cold plunge. I want to I want to do it there if he's okay with us doing it in his backyard for a video. It is such a weird thing, um, because you really do feel good. Afterwards. You really do feel like Spider Man. You really do feel like <laughs> Spider Man. I saw the new Spider Man. Oh, nice. What do you think? <laughs> ADHD, you know, cold plunges. I saw Spider-Man. Uh, I really liked it a lot. I really liked it a lot. A lot of people. Oh, I don't. I don't want to get into spoilers. I don't think this is really a spoiler. A lot of people weren't thrilled with the ending, but I really liked the ending. I think when you know that it's a part two of three, it's not a spoiler that it doesn't end. <laughs> doesn't conclude its story. That's like everything people are talking about right now, but. Yeah, because when it was reaching the end of the film, I was like, they can't wrap this up. Yeah, everyone they're was gonna, like. They're gonna do a to be continued. By my math, it should be like 10 more minutes. And I'm like, damn, this is gonna pull out a gun and shoot someone. <laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> anyway, ice bath. Ice bath. Uh, Yeah, I don't, I don't know all of the like benefits of it. And I don't know, I don't even know if there's any benefits to it just doing it um like randomly because i think you have to kind of like keep it up there's a certain amount of time like per week that's like makes it actually beneficial um but it is really nice when you after you do it because you have so much energy um for for those of you who don't know about cold plunges um you're basically just getting in an ice bath um something that's really cold i think it's usually about like 47 degrees degrees fahrenheit which is 11 uh, celsius i'm gonna say uh it's eight degrees Ooh, that's chilly yeah it's very very cold um so you do it for like f for like two to three minutes depending uh and then you get out um but it just like completely like shocks your system um and it's a it's a cool little test because you just have to breathe you have to like Chill ah, yourself out. <laughs> Chill yourself out. I'm already, I'm already out and don't know how to breathe. Got asthma. Don't know how to breathe. Don't know how to breathe. Don't know how to breathe. I don't even breathe. know if I should be doing them with asthma. Or they're like, no, that'll kill you. Maybe we should um, check No, I think, I think that having asthma would be fine. I think the only time that it would be like, eh, maybe you shouldn't do that, is like heart stuff. Yeah, because it constricts your blood vessels. So it's supposed to like activate your heart in a way and kick in adrenaline, increase your immune system and make you taller, make your dick grow three inches, your breast size gets bigger, uh, it cleans your teeth, shaves your face. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Um, Prostate exam? 
<laughs> you can get one while you do it if you want. <laughs> I had a conversation with someone yesterday and I was like, what? No, that is not the same procedure. Where they're like, <laughs> they're like, colonoscopy and a prostate exam are pretty much the same thing, right? And I was like, nope. Nope. Other than <laughs> Very something, different. something going in your ass, that's where the similarity <laughs> stops. <Yeah. laughs> they were like, they're pr the same procedure, right? I was like, no, they're not. They're extremely different. As and someone who's had about... both, <laughs> no, yeah. they're not the same. <laughs> and then we talked about, I was like, I was like, yeah, like the, the live stream of, of your ass. Because they were like, you have to be put under, right? And I was like, not always. No, I not wasn't. Not always. I didn't take any not. medication. I was just like, dude, sick let's Nothing play. at all? Nope. Wow. Was it uncomfortable? Yeah, it, it, there was one point towards the end of it that is the worst. Like, having it go in your ass is like, ah, oh, a little weird. Mm-hmm. But they flush your system up before and it like pushes like air in and water to kind of like, has to like inflate your intestines so it can see. It's just the doctor just, <laughs> just blowing you up like a balloon. Just the tube on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> just making a balloon animal out of me. But you do that and then they like spray water if there's any like waste that needs to be like cleared out of the way and they're looking at it and then that just makes you feel like full and it makes you feel like you have to fart all the time. Um, but then at the end of it, they have to see the opening. So when it comes back out near the opening, they get the camera and like twist it onto itself. Oh. So, so it like doubles up inside and then looks oh. back at the opening to be like, okay. <laughs> Looking back at it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, where are we? What are we doing? Where do we come from? How do we get here? <laughs> that is so funny. I just love the idea of you just like top left hand corner picture and picture just doing like whoosh. Top of the world, you like my name is Jack Sept guy. Welcome back to my colonoscopy. We're today. Welcome back to my ass. <laughs> oh And you do the whole outro with like a boss and everything. I did say when they were done, because I've like fully like awake and everything i was talking about it i was like man that was the worst live stream i've ever seen <laughs> and they all got a chuckle out of it but i feel like that's like taking the ice cold plunge which it's like it shocked my system there was stuff going oh the weirdest part was they have to like take tissue samples because they have to be like okay what are you allergic to if, if you're celiac do you are you prone to cancers any of that kind of stuff so they you see like a little clippers come out and it like snips a piece do you feel it? No, that was what was weird. I didn't feel anything. And then I could see like the blood coming out and I was like, what did you do? And then they have to like, <laughs> there's like, I had like one polyp, which is kind of like, it kind of looks like a canker sore inside you or like a uh -huh. mouth ulcer. And it was like, they just had to like take that. Did you see any poop? Yeah. <laughs> well, you get, you get, an, so funny. you get an enema first that has to clear you out. Oh, do they not just have you take a bunch of laxatives and you just... <laughs> I think for some people, they might do that. For me, they just shoved a thing up my ass and pumped me full of liquids. And then they were like, try and hold that for like 10 minutes, five at the least. And I was like, okay. What? And then like 50 seconds in, I was like, uh oh. And I was like, legitimately, I had like my hand on my cheeks, like holding, like the pushing <laughs> pressure, being like, this is going to be like a fire hydrant if I'm not careful. Fucking busting the valves in a submarine. When this whole thing was happening. <laughs> what was the conversation in the room? Was there any small talk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining like that is such a like a and like for a doctor it's normal. It doesn't matter to them at all because yeah. they do this all the time. But it's like that is a very vulnerable state to yeah. be in. <laughs> well, I was worried about that moment when I had the anime in because it just it's you really gotta go more than I've ever had to go. And then I was like, okay, I looked down, I was like, okay, I got like five minutes in. I think I got to like 5.06. And I was like, I got to go. And speed then, run. <laughs> any percent glitchless. <laughs> and then the the lady came in, um, the doctor that was doing the procedure, and she was like getting me ready. And I was like, I'm, I'm so sorry. I know you just got here, but I need to go. And I like did the whole like penguin walk <laughs> to the toilet. <laughs> and then I swear, it was like a, you know those jets of water that cut stone? Yeah. It, it felt like that, that I was going to burst the hole in the back of the toilet. Why do I have so many stories about my ass and it leaking? 
Oh, it's so funny. I kind of want to have a colonoscopy just to... We can do it for the, for the pod! We could! We could. Rhett and Link did vasectomies. The day? Yeah, they did a vasectomy video. Oh, I'm, get, I'm getting a cut off. We gotta go one bigger. They get a vasectomy, oh. they tie the tubes, we're getting our we dicks get, chopped. We're getting castrated. We get castrated. <laughs> but it's like a super wholesome live, it's a super wholesome thumbnail and stuff. Yeah, it's just like us like shaking hands. <laughs> With our cut off dicks in our hands. <laughs> well, castration is just balls, it's not dick. Oh, is it not? I'm pretty sure, because I think I used to think about that when I was younger and then I heard about, I did agricultural <laughs> science. I think so. I used to think about that when I was younger. <laughs> what? Surgical castration usually involves removal of the testicles that produce the male hormone testosterone. Okay. Does castration stop sex crimes was the top thing from the Washington Post. What? Whoa! Oh, that's a rabbit hole. I really... I want that rabbit hole cemented up. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole at all. Yeah, we could do colonoscopy video. I yeah. would do it. You do it and I'll commentate it. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm allowed to. That is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> do they have like a, what does the room look like? Paint a picture for me. It's just a surgical room. It just had but white like walls the, and it was like a, just a door and they had like a privacy like curtain. Your, your feet up in the stirrups. No, ah! my God, no! The water and the fluids and everything were just going bursting out of you. You're on, you're on your side, and you're doing a little like, <laughs> and your knees are you're together and up. You're in like a fetal position, basically. And then they just lube you up, Buttercup. And then they're they're not like, okay, you might feel a slight pressure. It's it, it's not like med, it's not like massage where it's like, is the pressure okay? How's the temperature? <laughs> It's just like, okay, here we go. <laughs> and then away we go. It's not that bad. I had heard, and the lady was like, we can put you on sedation that will, like, it'll make you feel like you've had, like, a couple of glasses of wine where it'll, like, take the edge off of it, basically. But then they're like, you have to stay until the sedation wears off afterwards. And I was like, I just want to go home and, like, work. And she was like, most people don't need the sedation. People just get kind of scared of it. And then I was like... Fucking, I was like, whatever, just hit me with it. I I want to see, <laughs> go go full masochist on it. <laughs> I want to see how far I can push my body. <laughs> um, now I'm interested. I wonder if it's allowed. It's, it has to be. It ha Well, we're famous. We can do what we want. Because it, we're not showing my ass. We're just showing inside. Yeah. We might have to blur some poop. Yeah, you might have to blur a lot of it. But it's more about the experience and the vibe and how you're reacting to it. More so than yeah, it is about like... Yeah, what's the vibe like? <laughs> Dude, vibe's tight. <laughs> it's just inflation <laughs> porn. It's just like, hey guys, vibe check? Are we vibe all, check, everybody we good? good? Everybody good? You good? good? You good down there? Sick. <laughs> there was a moment where... Because it was even weirder because normally when you get a colonoscopy done... Um, I can't remember the specifics of it. I think when you're under sedation, you have to be prepped to do a full large intestine because it does your large intestine it doesn't go any further than that. But normally it's for like blockages because I had digestive issues. They were like, we need to see if you have a blockage or any sort of like tissue that's blocking anything and why your stomach's always in cramps. So they went in and normally you just go in through the pooper and then like up to the first bend of where because it just goes up, it bends, it bends, and then it goes down into the small intestine. What is the camera? look like is it like a7s3 uh yeah it's a red komodo <laughs> but is it does it just kind of look like one of those long like flashlight yeah kind of things it's just oh, like okay. a big flexible tube and they can like bend it and it has a it has like a i think it has like a vacuum or an air blower it has water it has like little instruments you can shove up through holes to get in is it all controlled based on their motion or can it can the little head like Pan and tilt and stuff. Yeah, they go in and then they like they they turn it themselves. Do a push pull in your ass. <laughs> a dolly zoom. zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it's like look at that poop there. <laughs> Just a crash zoom on it. <laughs> I want the footage of a colonoscopy just to make funny edits. 
I wanted mine, and then it's like, oh, there's a piece of shit in there, and then you can just put like a YouTuber no one likes anymore like, in so your ass. That's funny. <laughs> can they um, give it to you? Like legally? I, can they? I don't know. Probably. Maybe. I think they can give it to your doctor for stuff, but it's it's because they're, they're specialists. Not the doctor? Well, you go to your GP, and then they're a GI specialist. But normally, it goes up to the first bend, and they they were like, "Well, I don't see anything here. Like, we can keep going if you feel okay." And I was like, "Yeah, fuck me up." And then they did like the whole intestine, the whole large intestine, and I was like, "That's not normal," but I'm kind of proud I did it. I'm proud that I'd, I'd go back and do it again. No sedation. It wasn't that bad. Yeah! And it's good! You gotta get your stuff checked! Gotta get your stuff checked out! No matter what gender you identify as, you gotta get your booty hole checked if you got issues. And, and people with prostates out there... Have you ever been walking down by the river and you hear the subtle sounds of the babbling brook? That's the sound of thousands, nay millions of people going to babble.com to learn language. You're not hearing the trickling of the water. You're hearing a bunch of people talk in unison. It just sounds so harmonious and beautiful like the life-giving earth water. But it's so hard when you go down to this babbling brook because, because you hear all these different languages and you don't quite understand them yet. But you can. Yeah, because babble. Babble takes 15 minute lessons. Make it a perfect way to learn a language on the go. You could be walking down the street, little old hobbit, just do 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 do, listening to other languages in your head. French, Italian, German, Spanish. Somebody comes up and says, Sprachen Sie Deutsch? You could be like, no. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> uh, just, uh, nope, but in French. <laughs> Listen, other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by real people, over a hundred language learning experts. They're not just going to teach you the normal stuff. They're going to teach you how actual native speakers speak the language. Yeah, because they have speech recognition technology. So you're not just speaking and being like, mm, am I imitating that correct? No, silly. You got speech Recognition technology that helps you pronounce things better and use the correct accent. So if you want to learn British English, you can just be like, Oi, what are you doing? Perfect. See that? 100%. 100%. Let me try now. <laughs> 40%. But the thing is, he still spoke the language. <laughs> yes, I did. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, live classes. You don't just have to scroll through the thing and be like, what's the word for sandwich? Blah. There's a bunch of different fun, engaging ways to learn. Plus, comes back at you with a 20-day money-back guarantee if you are, for some reason, not satisfied. That's incredible. And if you go to Babbel.com and use slash brain, Babbel.com slash brain, B-R-A-I-N, you can get 55% off your subscription. 55%? That's half plus 5%. So go to Babbel.com slash brain to get 55% off your subscription today and learn language. Babbel. Language for life. Have you had your prostate checked? No. I guess because you're under 30. Yeah. I think it's usually 35, I think. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. I think anything over 30 is like when the conversation happens. Yeah. I did have a conversation with my dad recently where he was like, you should go and do that because there's a history in my family. And so <clears throat> I will probably do that soon just to make sure. But if you got any lumps and bumps, check yourself for lumps and bumps. It's very important. Very important. I thought that I had a lump in, and a bump and then I went to the doctor and I was like, what's this? And he was like, oh, you're fine. I did like the full, full checkup, like blood work, like height, weight, breathing, like tonsils, and then like prostate check is in there. So I was like, I'll just do it all. Do you, I don't know if it's called something different maybe in the UK, but do you ever do peak flows for your asthma? Yeah, I suck at them. I have a peak flow here. I'll go get it. Ah, oh, go get the peak flow! Oh. So while Sean is going to get his peak flow, um, the peak flow, for those of you who don't know, is, I guess, to measure 
uh, not necessarily your lung capacity, but the strength of your lungs, I guess. It's just a little thing that you blow into, and there's a meter, and there's like a little plastic thing that when you blow into it, it, it pushes the plastic thing up, and so you can measure, I guess it's just how powerful your your lungs are. And so you just try and get it all the way, all the way to the top. It's like one of those, one of those carnival games where you swing the hammer and it goes all the way up, but you try to ring the bell. There's no bell on it. I wish there was, but he's back. He's returned. He's returned with this peak flow, baby. I don't know if you mean these, these things. Oh yeah. It looks very different from the one that I had when I was. Yeah. Cause there's. There's other tests that you can do, which is like, how much air can you circulate? And like, how much can you keep going? I have had that test, but this is just to be like, how much air can you push in one go? Yeah, I was just explaining to everybody what a peak flow is. Yours looks a little different. Mine was like an L shape. And it looked like, it looked like those like carnival games where you like swing the hammer down and then it just went up. Um, I could never, I could never to get it. I could never get it to go all the way up. I mean, I don't think you're supposed to. There's an average... I don't know, especially if you had asthma. <laughs> that does make sense. Uh, let me let me give it a, a big blow, because the thing is, you probably can't see it, at, or if you're listening, you can't see it at all. But it's like it's not like a, it's not like blowing out candles. It's like it's like blowing through a toilet roll holder. Have you ever done that though? When I was a kid and I went to the allergy, because I had asthma when I was a kid and I kind of grew out of it. Um, but there was a machine where they tested your breathing and they tested your lung capacity. And uh, it was a birthday cake with a bunch of candles on it. And oh. so they were like, they were like, breathe into the thing and try and blow out all of the candles. But you have to do it all in one breath. It was really cool. Oh, that's way cooler. Mine was just like a, like a computer graph. And he was like, you got to stay within like lines or something. I was like, this is fucking boring. Turns out my my ability for that was fine. Well, give us a give us a blow. Hmm. Okay, it goes from like it starts at sixty at the bottom and eight hundred at the top, and I can't remember what my peak is. I think it's like five fifty or five hundred, which was low for my age range. <sighs> uh, I got five sixty. Nice, nice. Uh, let's do one more. Uh, average it out. Yep. <sighs> Ugh. Uh, five seventy. So that's <laughs> oh, nice about mine i don't have a peak flow here so we have nothing to compare to um but great numbers uh yeah i'll, I'll search the peak flow normal reading um because there's like an age range for male and female um so oh it's for height so 175 um Jesus, this graph is hard to read. For a 30 to 35 year old, I should be hitting 620. So above 600. Mm. So I'm below average for my age and height. Yeah, the, you developed asthma late. Yeah, I got it when I was like seven. Oh. I guess I always had it, but I had an asthma attack when I was seven. And then between seven and 18, I was taking inhalers. And then 18 to 29, I stopped. And then suddenly it just came back with a vengeance. And now I have to take inhalers every day again. Weird. I was really worried when I, when COVID was going around, I was like, I'm like compromised. Like I'm one of those people that needs to get the vaccine earlier because I have a condition that I'm all, I'm also don't have the strongest immune system. So I have to be careful. And I was like, if I get it, I'm going to die. I'm going to die, dude. And now I've had it twice and I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't die, but I don't feel good. Now, this is completely different to what we're talking about. But but to segue, um, what if there was a world where asthma didn't exist? Hmm? And it's the world of uh, augmented reality. Apple sure. At WWDC. Apple Vision Pro. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I wanted to know your thoughts on it because WWE, WWDC just happened. Because the Worldwide WWE developer. are going to convert <laughs> solely to Apple Vision Pros. <laughs> Everyone in the stadium has to be wearing Apple Vision. <laughs> you can feel the sweat. Oh. Uh, but that was easily like the biggest thing. They did the whole uh, "we've got one more thing," <laughs> uh, which I think they do every time they do a keynote, kind of, and they have a new thing. Um, but it's uh, it looks like a VR headset that's clear, 
I saw it and I was like, ooh, $3,400? What the fuck is this thing? It's ridiculous, but it, I thought they were aiming it at like gaming, like the Quest or something, but they're not. They're using it for like workflow and it's also for mixed reality. So apparently it has like a really super high resolution in it where you can't really see any of the pixels anymore. So it feels like you're actually like passed through in your world. So it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be like you have floating desktop pages and you can like do work. Um, and it's all gesture based. So you can like click with your fingers and like pull stuff in and out. It's like, uh, it's like minority report. Yeah. But then they did that weird thing where it's like, you can see people's eyes through it, but they're not their eyes. It's like a projection because it has a screen on the front. Yeah. So it's like when people are watching stuff, you can kind of see like a blurry version that they're watching something. And then if you get close, you come into their vision like a Photoshop cutout. <laughs> and you can be like, here you go. Here's mail or something. And then your eyes show up when you want. But it's like, <laughs> it's like the thing records your eyes and projects them out frontwards. That's so weird. It's so bizarre. You're on a plane and then it's just like, would you like a snack? And it's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just your fucking projected <laughs> eyes in the dark. Oh, yeah, because they probably would like glow and stuff. Yeah, oh, if it's so a screen, weird. they probably would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, they played a little ad for it. And I thought the weirdest part of the ad was like, this is so fucking weird and dystopian. Uh, was where the there's a dad in the kitchen like doing some work and his kid comes up with a soccer ball and he doesn't take the headset off. Yeah. <laughs> he just starts playing with his kid with it on. And I was like, that's that's weird. I don't think why that's would, like the correct tone that you want to convey for why this. Why would you promote that? Yeah. Well, oh, like, big brain uh, hot take. Maybe they're living Steve Jobs' legacy because didn't he neglect his kids? <laughs> That is so true. You're dressed like Steve Jobs today. I am kind of dressed like Steve Jobs today. It's been chilly in California. It's gloomy out today and a little little bit drizzly. It's the complete opposite here. It's like 30 degrees Celsius everywhere. Which I know. <laughs> he wouldn't even survive in Arizona. That's like a... If we got that in Australia, that would be a good day. That's chilly. Yeah. It's relative. If you live in a place that doesn't have a hot climate and then it's hot, you will be hot and uncomfortable because you're not used to what that is. Yeah, fuckers. drag him. Fucking drag him. Not Stupid only that, but idiot. we have humidity here as well. It's not It's not dry heat. We have 67% humidity today. That's soupy. Yeah, we're getting up there. We're putting up those numbers and I live in a brick house. <laughs> uh, luckily, my recording room has air conditioning, but it's not like it's not like the Cadillac of air conditioning like you have in America. That's like really strong. It's like such a teeny tiny shit small market in England that yeah, it's like it's like a baby's blowing on my neck. I had this AC on all day, and my room is still twenty five degrees Celsius in here. Do you guys have central a AC in your home? Oh. Yeah, but only for this floor. The The bottom floor we don't because it has like a concrete ceiling. So we couldn't get the vents and everything. That's the thing, they're not, they're not, the houses here aren't built to accommodate like modularity. You can't just come later and be like, I'll put that through the floors. Like I have a concrete ceiling downstairs. So what are you gonna do? Drill the fucking concrete out and put a big tube in? Sometimes I do. Plus there's no, there's no like, room between the bottom floor and the top floor if it's just a concrete slab then where are you going to put the ducting mm -hmm. through through this room into the floor <laughs> just a big tube Perfect. in the middle anyway Perfect. it's warm here and i do like it but at the same time you can't really escape from it when people are like oh that's decent weather it's like yeah when you're out in it it's fine but then when you come inside and it's the same or worse it's awful terrible if only you had Apple Pro Vision to visualize what the humidity is. Anyway, I'm kind of excited for the headset. I I don't like that it's so expensive, but I also hate that I'll probably get one just to check it out. I wish I could like go somewhere and try it out to see if I would enjoy it. I cuz I'm I'm more excited about like sitting down and watching like big movies or something on it, but I really wish you could hook stuff up to it. Because I bought one of those glasses. Uh, Aaron has a pair that are like the N-Reels or something. Mine are the Viture. I saw them on TikTok. But it's just like they have like little screens inside them. And you can get like a cover for them. And then you can hook up like a switch or something to them. 
And then it's like bigger in your vision and it's cool. Does it work well? Kind of. It's not like, wow, future. But it is it is nice to be able to like lie down on like a bed and play while the switch is like in your hand. Is uh is it like big and clunky? Like do you no. does it have an HDMI port? How is it's it? like a, a pair of sunglasses. And then it the ones I got have like a dock that you plug the switch into, and then it just has like a single cable that comes up and attaches at the back. Oh. And then the dock has like a battery in it as well that keeps it going longer. But for like flights and stuff, it's kind of cool, but the Apple one, I'm not sure about. I wish I could like hook my switch and stuff up to it, because at least then it has like wide range functionality. Because I think that's what I would mainly use it for is like flights and stuff, which it being $3,400, it's like, that's not worth it. You can get a me. very, very nice flight for that amount of money. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also just like you were just saying, it's like I'm not going to do work stuff on it, really. I would like want to play things and it has two hours of battery <laughs> which they're like showing people watching movies and there's this trend now it's like you can't even watch like the batman on that or oppenheimer they're all like three hour movies now oh the two hours is that's really low uh, yeah i don't know if they're hoping that other people will make battery packs for them because it has a a cable that goes into it and then the battery pack is something you carry around in your pocket so the battery's not built into the headset because apparently it's super heavy already because it's made out of metal. So as much as I love shiny gadgets and cool tech and VR and all that shit, I'm trying to like refrain from getting one because I don't think it's going to be... I don't think anyone should really be getting the first generation of them. It's more for like developers and like high-end companies and things like that. I don't know. I will be very excited to watch Marquez Brownlee's video on it when... He, he did one. You should watch it. Like where he actually has one? He didn't have one, but he was at that presentation. He got to use one afterwards. Oh. So okay. he, he went through it and his video got me excited for it. But again, the price tag is like... Yeah. I don't like, know. <laughs> they did show that you can do FaceTime with it. So it scans your eyes and stuff and you can use your phone to scan your face and then it makes like a 3d model of you that then it projects two people for facetime and then the sensors track your mouth and your face and everything so it knows when you're talking and can track your mouth but you get to see people normally and they get to see like weird like mom, 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 mom. <laughs> yeah i was about to say like Apple probably, uh, when they talked about it, were like, this is going to be amazing. But in practice, I feel like that's going to look janky as fuck. Yeah. And it's just that weird, like you said, the kid running up to the dad and he doesn't take it off. It's like, are we really promoting not being a good dad and like playing with your kids? Because he, he like did a thing where he like recorded them or something as well. Right. And then it's like, oh, it's in the headset. I'm like, sure. But a phone is like, you can do that already. I don't, I don't like that idea. Well, I guess that's a plus side with the battery life because you could only neglect your children for two hours, <laughs> and then and then you have enough, to take enough off. for any parent, really. Yeah, it's like not now. Mommy's having her special time. <laughs> Mommy's having her her AR. Time. Yeah, it's like when Jenna Marbles used to be like, "It's me time. I'm having a little me time right now." I'm having a little bit of uh, enrichment time. <laughs> yeah, like I'm a little like I'm a little monkey. I. I think the potential for it is huge, but I also hate that we're like barreling towards sci-fi tropes that are so obviously not what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, I feel like we have a lot of examples um, in media where it's like, hey guys, um, like the uh, the world that Blade Runner is isn't good. Yeah, you shouldn't idolize that. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm excited for it to come out and see uh, see what it's like. I would really like to try one. I don't think I'll buy one. What's that? I was trying to look for the the sci-fi quote, which is like, <laughs> guy, sci-fi author, I've created the human pulverizer to pulverize as many humans as I can in a small amount of time as a cautionary tale to not build a human pulverizer. It's like, <laughs> Apple, we built the human pulverizer from the popular movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's not that's the message you take from that it's like mr b squid game it's like <laughs> here's squid game but without any of the like social undercurrent and like political conversation and it's like you missed the point of it you just you just did the consumerism aspect of squid game without any of the 
sort of like undertones of the conversation, like the the higher intellectual part of it. We'll see what happens. We'll see if it's cool. We're working towards a future where, oh, I hope AI can live my life for me. <laughs> live the life that I want, but I don't want to bother doing. Ah, God, it, <laughs> it is uh not great but it is also kind of funny seeing all of the ai music covers that have been coming out yeah. of like <laughs> spongebob characters doing like my chemical romance it it is really kind of concerning though like i saw squidward tentacles singing my way by frank sinatra yeah and it's actually good it's actually good and it it's a little it's a little spooky yeah, I mean, that's the thing with the presidents talking about Minecraft towards one another. It's like, God, I hate that this is so funny. Yeah, and it's so well done. It's very, uh, it's very spooky. Technology is, uh, didn't they, I don't know if this is real or not, but didn't they in the, the US, I think, put out something that was like, hey, scientists, why don't we take a break from AI for a second? We're going a little, we're going a little quick. I think that was a thing. I have the things that I'm saying are so vague. Hold on. I want to Google this now. Um, it could be. I don't know. Maybe. I can't imagine your country doing that, though. <laughs> can't imagine anybody being like, let's actually stopping the scientists. Yeah, that sounds about right. More than a thousand technology leaders and researchers, including Elon Musk, surprisingly, have urged artificial intelligence labs to pause development of the most advanced systems, warning uh, in an open letter that AI tools present profound risks to society and humanity. AI developers are locked uh, in an out of uh, in an out of control race to develop and deploy even more powerful powerful digital minds that no one, not even their not even their creators, can understand, predict, or reliably control. According to the letter, which the nonprofit Future of Life Institute released on Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday is relative to whatever week you're in. That was a while ago, I guess. But I guess there's a lot of technology people that are like, oh, we're going too fast. Slow the train down. Because then the AI will start to create more AI. And then the robots will take over. And it'll be like the Matrix. I had a... Maybe this is like a very common aspect of it. Um, I kept thinking about like, this is going to get into such like fucking shitty conspiracy theory, like a really bad podcast type of conversation. But the whole idea of like, oh, AI gets like the idea of it is that it's like the singularity. So like a, another technological big bang. So once the AI has access to the internet and it becomes self-aware, it instantaneously gets like all the information it can need all at once. Cause it, it's like when you search something on Google, it goes through stuff really quick and then finds what you need. And it's like, imagine something that's auto searching itself all the time, getting all the answers it needs to everything constantly. So it, it moves very quick. But I was thinking that what if, what if it just didn't want to like kill humans and it was like, no, I did all the searching and it's really easy to like integrate into people. And it's like a human machine hybrid kind of scenario. And it's like, I mean, that is pretty dystopian as well. I'm like, I don't think every scenario with AI has to lead with us like dying. Cause in movies, it's always like, you guys are killing the planet. It's like, I think the AI would figure out a way of fixing the planet and helping us maybe, I don't know. It'd be like a, uh turn into like iRobot with Will Smith where it's like oh man the robots want to help people but then but then what if there's a robot uprising maybe it's just my optimism speaking that I I don't know I play too many video games <laughs> and it's like no here's exactly why it would kill all of us and I'm like oh do you think God stays in heaven because he too is afraid of what <laughs> he's created <laughs> <laughs> God so gives his toughest battles to his strongest warriors. That is so funny that that is a Steve Buscemi quote from Spy Kids. Is it? <laughs> yeah, that's where wow. that quote is from. It's from Spy Kids. That's profound. Very, very funny. That's why Spy Kids was ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. It really was. It was. Really, really was. Anyway, I hate that because we talk about certain things on this podcast and we move on to a conversation so quick afterwards. 
that whatever I say about certain topics, people are like, that's it, that's his stance. And I'm like, no, I was I was gonna clarify stuff, but I just forgot what we we're talking I about. Just, I just forgot. <laughs> it cut back to earlier when we were, I don't remember, Oh, we were talking about cold plunges, and it was like, yeah, cold plunges are, oh, I saw Spider-Man! <laughs> <laughs> wow! We'll call that, we'll call that, like, spacing out and going on to something else immediately, the Spider-Man principle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Speaking of Spider-Man, <sighs> there's a lot of hubbub around Tom Holland taking a break from acting. I don't know if you saw that. I did see that. It's always an interesting conversation. Because you have people on one side being like, oh, looky him. He's able to take a year off. It's like, I have to go to my job every single day and still put in the hours. I'm like, that's that's fair. And then everyone on the other side is like, good for him. It must be stressful. I'm like, that's that's fair. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't know. He's in a place where he can just take a year off. Yeah. I mean, we're kind of in the same boat. I'm kind of taking time off right now. So I I think for me, my bias is like, I totally get it, Tom. I'm in your position. We're both men of equal talent and stature and handsomeness. <laughs> Man, Tom, you and I are so similar. Let's grab a drink sometime. You yeah, know? we also both have girlfriends that are like taller than us. Like, oh, we're mm-hmm. short kings. Should stay together and get drinks and dinner and be best friends. <laughs> get drinks and dinner and maybe cuddle a little bit in the whole day. Yeah. And, you know, we'll like, see where the night goes. Like, you can put on Spider-Man and I'll just compliment you the whole time. If that's what you're into. I'll go, Tom, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> Spider-Man, <laughs> innit? It's Spider-Man, innit? That, but that's you at the same time. It's, that's Did you, you American accent for me, Tom? <laughs> oh, you really sound like you're New I'm York. I'm Spider-Man. Dude. It's like, fucking, <laughs> what a belter. <laughs> 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 what an absolute belter. Um, I think it's good. I'm in that position now where I have not played Spider-Man, but I, like, let's get a little deep for the latter half of this. <laughs> I love getting a little deep. The last couple of weeks, I have been in a major depressive episode that I don't know, I don't know where it came from. I don't know what is happening. I was in, like, a great mental state. And then suddenly I woke up one day and I was like, man, I don't want to do anything. And I hate everything. And I'm so pissed off at everything all the time. Look at us. And that just lasted for like two weeks. Like every day I was just like, man, I don't even want to like get out of bed. And I had no idea why. And then I was just thinking about it. I'm like, I think I'm just fucking incredibly burnt out on everything I'm doing. Because I have like so many things going on. I'm like, I need to take... If I really want to focus on like Iris or podcast, not this podcast, but like a narrative thing or like story stuff or other projects that I want to do, I really need to like not do as many videos. I need to like swing back and forth. I can't do it all at once, all the time. Yeah. And I was like, man, I'm fucking miserable. I need to get away for a bit. (laughs) Look at us on the same cycle. I also have, uh, (laughs) I knew it was really bad when, um, Last week, I went to therapy, and I sat down, and my therapist went, ooh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Jesus. How does that make yeah, you feel? <laughs> just, uh, just uh, I don't know. There, I recently have just caught myself, like, spiraling a bit, where I'm just like, oh, man, like, what am I doing? What is, what is going on? Like, blah, 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 blah. And I'll just be like, what if everything crashes and burns and blah 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 catastrophizing and... yeah um yeah i i have what the kids call clinical depression and now it's actually diagnosed so i can say that not like everybody else who says it and then aren't actually clinically diagnosed but i have normal anxiety uh health anxiety clinical depression adhd <laughs> health issues asthma i think that this is good to talk about though because I, I don't think that a lot of a lot of like YouTubers and streamers talk about this but like I have the thoughts all the time and I really do love making stuff mm-hmm. but you both you and I have been doing it for 10 years now and there are these thoughts a lot of times where it's like I don't know how long I want to do this like I I have no idea like there was a time last month where I was just having a real rough go of it. Um, and I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Why am I doing this? Um, and it, it comes in waves, but 
Yeah, it's it's pretty grinding. I think the conclusion I came to was that it's not that I don't like <clears throat> what I do. It's that I'm doing too much at the same time. And I feel like for me, I have like a creative streak in me and a bunch of ideas that I want to make come to fruition. But when I'm doing everything as well as like the regular content day after day after day, because I'm not even doing daily anymore. And it still feels like it's a lot to take on because I just I can't focus two things at the same time. And I just end up putting in like really low effort on both of them. And that's that's not fun for anybody involved. And it's not valuing my own time enough either. So I was like, maybe I need to like get away and then figure out what I want to do and then actively like pursue other things and um, finally get like the projects done. Because I also I, I hate the idea of sitting down and not filling out the potential that I feel like I have. Like, I feel like I have an artistry in me that my regular content isn't fulfilling anymore. It did for a while. And now I feel like it's kind of like the same motions over and over again and people are all used to it and that's fine. And I could keep doing that, but for me, I just get in my own head about it. And then I, it's like that thing where you become a caricature. And then when I start recording, I'm like, I, I don't even know how I'm supposed to act anymore because it's it's almost gone above like a self-aware level. Whereas I'm like in the zone, I'm like, I'm not really being myself ever because I just don't, I'm like entertaining, but I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to get my thoughts out on what I mean. There's this weird thing going off of what you just said that, that happens sometimes, especially after you've been doing this for a really long time, where you like almost have this like kind of out of body experience where, uh, you're recording and you like recognize that you're in like recording mode, but you're like, I don't really know like what I'm, what I'm doing. And like, I don't really know like who, who this is. Um, and it's very weird. I think, I think when I started off the energy and the enthusiasm and everything was all like 110% for like five years. And that was great because I had so much burning fiery passion for it. And then as I did it, it was like, okay, some days I don't really want to record, but I was able to like, trick myself to getting to that space and kind of like not so much faking it but kind of like forcing it where you can like get yourself to that position after like a few minutes and i feel like the position i'm in now is i i feel like if i'm doing that i'm being really phony and i just have a hard time force it i can't even like force myself to that position anymore because i've been doing it for so long and i i think it would be better served if i did the things that i wanted to do rather than I saw a really great quote from Theo Vaughn, of all people, who comes out with a lot of incredible quotes that are just really bizarre. But he had one where he was talking like honestly, and he was almost like crying as he said it. And it was one of those moments where it's like, where's where's the punchline? <laughs> Why isn't he talking about weird shit? And <laughs> yeah. he said something like, I don't know whose expectations I'm trying to meet anymore, whether it's I've built up expectations for myself that are so hard to meet or if I'm trying to meet other people's expectations of me anymore. And I was like, man, that's that feels really accurate where I feel like I've been doing this for so long that I don't know who I'm trying to do this exact version of myself for anymore. And I want to kind of like. I think that's why the podcast is fun and the idea of like going to LA and recording other stuff because it's just a different environment instead of like because there's games that I could play right now and I I sat down to try and play Amnesia the Bunker and I was like ah, this is not really it's a bit more frustrating than it is fun for me to play and I tried playing the Grey Hill Incident which came out and I was like oh this is awful and I was just like that's it I'm deflated I have no energy for this today I'm done <laughs> and I kind of just like like walked out of my room all sad <laughs> No, I, I don't know. It's it kind of sucks sometimes when it's just like, yeah, I just I I hate the feeling of starting a recording and then scrapping it. Like it it feels very defeating. Where it's just like, nope, this isn't good. The the only thing that's worse than that is when it fails. Like when you record it and then you look over and something didn't work. Yeah. Um, but scrapping stuff like that, yeah, it feels terrible. It's so awful when you when you're like, oh man, that was a really fun video, and then it didn't record, and you're like, ah, 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 I want to die! I did that for Hitman VR, where I recorded a really fun episode, and then the whole episode had, do you want to turn on NVIDIA's uh, photo mode? And it was just across the entire screen. And I was oh like, oh my god. And so I just went back, and I had to come back the next day, because I was like, I was like, recording a video in and of itself is not 
the hardest thing in the world to do. But when you put like all your energy into it and then something goes wrong, it's like, man, that took everything out of me. And I'm I'm already like burnt out before I record it. And then it's like, man, it's, I don't know what to do with this. But I, I, I feel bad because it's the same thing with the Tom Holland thing. Because it's like in such a privileged position where I feel bad talking about it because it's hard to relate that feeling because I know other people have it so much harder, like going to a nine to five job day after day. There was that one video that went around on Twitter of a guy doing his nine to five job and he's like putting his laptop in and there was sad music and he was at his work and then he came home, played with his dog and did his gym and then he goes to bed and then like repeats that five times a week. And I'm like, that is a much harder job to do than what I do in my current position. And I feel awful that I'm not enthusiastic about what I'm doing enough. <laughs> I was talking to somebody about this last night um, where I was just like, getting very vulnerable um i uh i sometimes i have a hard time opening up to people and being like very real with people um because i and i know that i am allowed to but i don't feel like i should be um i don't feel like i'm allowed to have problems and i'm allowed to complain and i don't feel like i am allowed to be sad because I'm extremely lucky and extremely privileged and have um, a very like abnormal life that so many people wish that they could have. And so I feel like very lucky and I'm extremely grateful. But with that comes like, I don't feel like I'm allowed to complain about anything because I have it so good on paper, you know? And so like when I get sad and when I have problems, it's like this weird thing of like, I have a really hard time like addressing those problems because I feel like I shouldn't be having them at all. And I always try and like relate it back to people doing like quote unquote regular jobs. Um, Cause it is that thing. I, I hate the term like, I hear it a lot as well from people in like big positions as well. Where it's like money doesn't buy happiness. And like, I get what you mean, but it definitely affords a lot of like really great comforts that makes it easier to be happy. Um, and I, I always try and like check the privilege to be like, ah, am I complaining too much? Like this is still a pretty great job, but that's why I'm like, the problem comes for me internally where I'm trying to figure out a way of being passionate about what I do again, and also make stuff for people that is actually interesting and worth watching and doing the projects that I want to do and fulfilling that creative side of me that regular content just isn't really doing. And I, I was talking to Corey a little bit about this, Corey Kenshin, because he he's really good about, even though people meme it all the time, where he like disappears for nine months and then comes back. It's like, I totally get it though. And he's he's so good about like going away, finding that energy again, coming back, like all of his effort. And you can really tell and it's really fun to watch. And I feel like he does old school YouTube Let's Plays better than anyone else really these days. Um, and it's it's really cool to see. And I, I used to always think for a while that I'm like, I'm almost at 30 million subscribers and I'm one of the like legacy creators. I'm like, I really should know what I'm doing more. And I get like, I like shame myself for not knowing what I'm doing or like asking for help. Cause it's like, I probably should have had it figured out by now, but I just go in those waves all the time where I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. I know what I want to do, but I don't, I don't know if I have the strength to do it. <laughs> I don't know if I have the strength to do it. <laughs> Cause I, I also don't want to do that thing where I like leave constantly. And I like, I don't want to like leave the audience with nothing um, or like leave and then come back with nothing. So when I like take time off next, I want to make sure that I'm like, actively because i'm one of those people that procrastinates a lot and then when i take the time off i'm like the energy will come like once i'm not uploading regularly the energy will come things will like fall into place then i'll get the other projects done when the time is right but i need to like i need to go into the time off actively with a plan to do other things rather than just waiting for things to happen and i think that's my biggest problem in life and i compare myself constantly to other people all the time and i'm like why can't i do that other people are able to do like this and like 10 other things and have five other businesses and they all do well and it's really good. I'm like, it's just not my brain. I, I'm miserable if I do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm constantly comparing myself to other people and it's not, <clears throat> it's not good. 
It's not fun. It just kind of makes you feel like uh, makes you feel like shit a little bit. Yeah. You know. But therapy's um, been helping. I yeah. Because living in Brighton as well, we talked about this when you were here that it's kind of lonely now that we don't really have like people that we actively hang out with like all the time. And I'm someone that really craves like friend group connections and I'm a very social person. So like most of my friends like you are all in LA. So it's hard to kind of be here and you're kind of like seeing the world through a digital lens. And I hate doing that. And I, I have a hard time keeping up with people even in text or anything like that. Cause I just hate, I hate keeping up with my friendships through the internet or through texts or anything like that. So I, I like like the physicality of my friendships and I, I think I've just been struggling with that a lot. And then when you just sit down and you're, you're doing work all the time and not really, so I was like, I don't even have any hobbies outside of my job other than gaming. And I'm like, gaming's part of my job. It's not really like my hobby and it's still like a screen and I need, I need something different to do. I was also talking about that last night with a friend. I was just like, I, I should get a hobby. And she, she like laughed and, uh, and I was like, no, like, but actually though, like, I don't really have any hobbies. Like I just like, I do recording stuff and like it, all of my other interests are similar enough to this, that it all feels r related. Yeah. Um, it's like yeah, gaming, it's, filmmaking, movies yeah. in general. It's like, I'm still sitting down and looking at a screen for hours. Yeah. Um, but then I just, I'm, I've been doing that for years where it's like, I should get a hobby. And then I don't. <laughs> yeah. And then I just I, um, don't. I I painted a, a Warhammer 40k Space Marine last night. Because I was like, I don't care about Warhammer or the game. But I was like, I want something like Lego or something to like do. And the, the painting of it has always fascinated me. And I was like, I'll, I'll try that out. And it's just a fun thing to learn. And like seeing like the different techniques that you can use to paint them. And how the paint thins out. And where to apply base coats and shading and all that kind of stuff. And it was really fun. It, it turned out better than I expected, better than a lot of people's first attempts. So I bought I new like paintbrushes. tile task. Yeah, I bought new paintbrushes today. I'm going to paint the second one tonight. Hopefully it's a little better. I have spray paint on the way I'm going to learn. Like, even if I never played the game, which I don't intend on, I'm like, and I don't want, really want to keep any of the little figures either. I'm like, I just want to paint them and do something else with them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just fun to have something that's not sitting down and looking at a screen i hate <laughs> i hate the content creator brain so much i was like we should do that for a video <laughs> like, no that's the whole point i think we're both the same way where it's like i want to live my life away from the internet more than i live it on the internet and i see that so often with people who are like i'm burnt out and then it's like i'm going on holiday and then on holiday all they're doing is like posting pictures from the holiday that are like curated pictures for likes on social media. Like that's not taking a holiday. And I, I talked to my therapist about it where I haven't had a holiday since I was a kid, like for family. So th that's like one of the plans this year is to take like a no, like when I go on holiday, like not go on my phone, but also like not bring a switch or anything with me and like bring an actual book or bring a hobby or go outside more. It's like such generic things, but I'm like, I need, I need it. <laughs> yeah. The, I went to the Bahamas after creator clash and that was the, that was the first vacation that I've taken as an adult because any, any time that I, well, also coming to London was kind of a vacation as well because we didn't record anything. We just hung out. That's true. Yeah. Um, but any, any time I travel, it's always for work or it's going home to visit my family um <laughs> sometimes i'll talk to my mom about it and she'll be like you need to go on more vacation and i'm like yeah i do and she's like you should take a vacation and come here and in my mind i'm like i love coming home and i love seeing my family but it's not really a vacation because i don't know then i have the added stress of like whenever i go home it's like okay i there's a billion people that i need to see and it's like kind of stressful it almost turns into work then at that point um but yeah, just taking some peace of mind time. I feel like I was so good at that like two years ago. And then, I don't know, I just went back into my old habits. So I need to kind of like detach a little bit more and find what I want to be doing. 
Because there's a lot of cool things that I want to do and cool ideas that I have. And I'm like, I'm not doing any of these. And I really, not that I should be. That's a no-no word in my therapy. Because I, I say I should do a lot of things. Um, but I want to do things. Your no-no word is should. My no-no word is, um, my no-no word is weird. I was going to say, that's weird. <laughs> uh-huh. Um yeah because use, my, use your words my my therapist is always like okay how does that make you feel and i'm always like eh, it makes me feel, feel kind of weird and she's like okay but, but hold on we need to like break it down though like what is the actual feeling she gave me like a like a ha, like a kind of diagnosis kind of not diagnosis where she's like i think you have this thing called alexithymia which is just the uh the inability to express what your emotions are with words. It's like you can't, you you have a really hard time articulating like how you're actually feeling into words. Um, which Evelyn actually sent me, uh, she sent me a photo of this thing that her therapist has, which is like a, a wheel with a bunch of different emotions on it. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. I don't have that problem, but I have another problem with my language that I use very extreme words. Like extreme would be one of the words I use. But everything that I'm doing is like, yeah, I do that. And that's kind of pathetic. And she's like, ooh, pathetic. And like, I talk about myself a lot like that with like really harsh, extreme, hyperbolic words. And I think some of it comes from the intelligence sphere when I was a kid. And like, I had a good command of language at a young age from playing games and reading books and stuff. So I, I liked using big English words to make me sound smart. But then I think it just kind of bled over into everything else. And now I am good at describing things, but I describe it in a very harsh way. And she's always like, if a friend came to you and said these things, what would you say? And I'm like, I wouldn't say it that way. I'd be nicer. <laughs> she's like, yeah, be nicer to yourself. I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah, but I'm a fucking asshole. I don't want to be nice to myself. I suck. Yeah. It's Everything's terrible. It's like you don't you don't know what's in here. You're not locked in here with me. I'm locked in here with me. <laughs> I'm locked in here with me. It is funny though. Like I completely understand what she's saying. She's correct, obviously. But it's like, would you say that to your friend? It's like, no. But I would say it to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's why I'm saying it. Yeah. There's that, I've been reading my stoicism book again, and there's like a big thing about, like whenever you're doing something in your day, act as if your mentor is watching you or like someone you look up to or your idol or someone whose traits you really appreciate. And like, imagine them in that scenario and like asking them questions about what they would do next. And I'm like, sounds like, what would Jesus do? <laughs> I'm like, that probably just comes from stoicism. <laughs> what would Jesus do? So... Living my life that way, but I feel a lot better now. I've been taking like, I haven't worked in like four days. I'm like, okay, I'm taking time away from my phone. I'm not playing as many games. I'm like painting like Warhammer things. Like I wanna, I wanna get into a new book, stuff like that. So it's, it's helping. I would like to read, but it's just so hard. It's just- It can be, yeah. So hard so hard well should we should we read <laughs> some we... question <laughs> oh dear ethan and sean my best friend and i are both turning 50 next year and we've known each other for almost our entire lives about 20 years ago i died in a car crash but my spirit has been able to convince her that i've been alive this whole time via some sixth sense trickery but soon, my incorporeal abilities will disappear forever. Should I tell her the truth? P.S. Try challenging yourselves by offering a solution that doesn't involve gaslighting. <laughs> <laughs> we all, you got oh, us. Oh, man, you got us. All. Oh, I don't have any advice that doesn't involve gaslighting, emotional manipulation, subterfuge. So let's break this down. This was this was from Leslie. This this started out so sweet. I thought it was like, oh, I can't wait to like say 
I hope that's us when we're 50. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wonder how long I will be alive. <laughs> <laughs> Until you're 67, apparently. 67. Uh, okay, you gotta so aim for that. Aim for the bushes. Aim aim for 67. That's the new goal. Yeah. That's the new goal. Live, lar live large. So they're turning 50 next year. They've known each other their, almost their entire lives. 20 years ago, dad in a car crash. But soon, their abilities will fade. So they've known you physically more than they've known you ghostly. If we're assuming most of your lives, they've known you for like 30 years physically... 20 of those years have been hauntingly. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I mean, you can still do nice things for them. Like, just because you're dead doesn't mean you're. F doesn't mean that it stops with you, you know? Like, leave down hints. Put rose petals all over their house. Oh. Just like. Just like start doing stuff. Like, the candles are there for the birthday cake and then you blow them out. Like, just remind them that you exist. Write your name and blood on their mirror. Well, but that's the thing, is that I don't think their issue is that they're going to disappear forever and, uh, like, their body is going to. I don't think that the haunting will will stop once the body is gone, but I think the issue here is they're asking, should I tell her the truth about them being dead for for the last Oh, 20. right. So it's not that they don't... Oh, yeah. So if it's, like, Sixth mm -hmm. Sense and they're aware that you're around, but they're not aware you're dead. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm I I say no. I say don't tell them, but start doing really impressive magic tricks. Start convincing them that you've been taking magic classes, that you're gonna be the next David Blaine, and that you're like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my hand in this hat, and then you like put your hand like all the way down and it like disappears, and then you pull it back out, like, haha, and they're like, how did you do that? A magician never tells. You like walk through the wall and they're like, whoa, how did you do that? <laughs> I'm just very good at the magic. Does that count as gaslighting? Fuck. No, it I counts think... as fun. <laughs> gaslighting? Because you're not, you're not trying to convince them. You're saying, oh, try not to gaslight them. You've been gaslighting them your whole dead life. <laughs> this is true. Your whole dead life. <laughs> yeah. You're you not can't telling spell gaslighting without fun. <laughs> if you put fun gaslighting in the beginning. If you if you're dead and you're not telling them the truth, then every day you're just gaslighting them already into thinking that you're just still the same. What I'm trying to do is have fun with it. Fun gaslighting. Fun lighting. Uh, fun lighting. I think, you know, you care about your friend, obviously. You've known each other uh -huh. almost your I mean not enough life. to tell them you're dead. I guess not, yeah. Um uh, also, if you died in a car crash, um, and this is your best friend, uh, how how much of a best friend are they really? Did you throw a funeral? If yeah, did nobody tell them? I'm unsure how this occurred, but anyway, you want your friend to be having a good time. You want your friend to think highly of themselves, right? And so. How do you think more highly of yourself? Well, a lot of times you can get some satisfaction by by completing a task and, and feeling smarter and maybe feeling clever and witty. So I think what you should do is uh, sort of like an escape room style. Start leaving out a bunch of riddles and mysteries. Sort of like, oh, maybe you can make like a scavenger hunt to your dead body. Yeah, it leads back to the scene of the crime or the and gravestone. They have, to, they have to piece it together. Like the last one is like in a graveyard and it just says like, look up. And then they look up and see your name on the gravestone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because so they then, come to the conclusion themselves. Yes, they're figuring it out themselves and that makes them feel smarter. Does Bruce Willis figure it out himself? I can't remember. I I haven't seen The Sixth Sense in a long time. Something happens and then he like comes to the conclusion that he's dead and then it like flashes back. Yes. Um, this is, they, oh, this is like an actual murder mystery. If the car crash you were in, somebody else survives and they hit you and kill you. Um, it's a murder mystery that your friend gets to solve. Mm-hmm. 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 I, I, I love that. I think that's good. You know, you're yeah. making them, 
you have a fun activity for them. Uh, you could maybe do it over, you can plan it out a little bit so it's over a long weekend. So if there's some sort of bank holiday happening on Monday, uh, you should do it then. So then they have this whole long weekend and you're like, I planned an activity. Uh, I planned an activity, but it's it's more for you. So I'm, I'm a step out. Um, why don't you uh, look in the drawer over there? And then there's a big scroll with the don't make it too hard because it seems like your friend's not that observant if they don't realize you're dead. So like, keep it simple. Like it just says like, go to the kitchen. And then in the kitchen, it says, go outside. And outside it says, go back in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those photos where it's like all of the text is very faded and it's like, look in the top right, look at the bottom left, look in the, look in the middle, look at yourself, look back at me. I'm yeah, so don't, don't make it, don't make the scavenger hunt about like f solving riddles. Just make it take a really long time. And it's like, dig in the yard. Now fill it back in. Then go get yourself a snack. Now dig watch, in the <laughs> watch dig all in the yard. Jeopardy. Notice the body. <laughs> <laughs> Cover it up. Ask no questions. Go inside. Uh, heat up the lasagna. Watch all the episodes of Jeopardy. <laughs> go back Realize. outside. <laughs> Realize that, wait. Was that my best friend of 50 years? <laughs> oh, fuck. Check the body again. Look at the name tag. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the toe tag. Yeah. Why'd they put it on the toe? Because that's the first part of you that gets wheeled out. I guess so. So you don't have to pull the whole thing out. You just have it on the toe. I guess so. We should go to a morgue for a video. I don't want to see a dead body. I've never seen a dead body. Um, really? I don't really, no. And I don't really Do you want, want to? to? <laughs> Uh, but I think it would be cool to go to a morgue and see what that's like. Yeah, Sean and Ethan embalm someone. <laughs> yeah, they've got to have... They've... You know how it's like some YouTubers do like, I trained with the military for a week. I did like XYZ type of training. It's like, can we do mortuary training? Yeah. Just on like pigskin or... <laughs> well, I was just thinking that where it's like, when they train people they probably you like why wouldn't they be using actual dead bodies oh yeah they get cadavers that are like donated yeah so it's and use like, your body for research mm -hmm. i think that i would like to donate my body to science i don't know how to set that up <laughs> just call your local congressman <laughs> i think like can i choose the kind of science <laughs> yeah it's like you give it over to people and then it just says, find the hidden ring. <laughs> it's not about, it's not about trying to like study and research. It's just like, here's your scavenger hunt. <gasps> here's the scavenger hunt. Oh my God. The scavenger hunt is like in Resident Evil 8 when you're in Beneviento's uh, mansion and there's the body and you have to like open up the body, but you do that with your actual corpse. And then at the very end, they realize they're like, oh wait, fuck, this is a body, not a wooden mannequin. Yeah, there you go. Cause again, your friend's not very observant. Yeah. They'll have fun with it. They'll have so don't gaslight time, your friend, fun light your friend. And create exactly. a scavenger hunt out of your own corpse. <laughs> Thanks for stay, uh, thanks stay for leaky. <laughs> stay leaky. This one comes in from Dionicus. Damn, if your name's Dionicus. You better have a trident. Um, they said everyone thinks I'm deranged. What do I do? No context for anything. <laughs> nope. Just <laughs> Dionicus. Okay, Dionicus. I mean, we could go. It just says, what do I do? It doesn't say, like, how do I stop them from thinking I'm deranged? So the obvious answer is to just double down. Get, like, get, like, get into your Joker arc. Ooh. Ooh. But do, like, a really bad Joker. <laughs> Want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> it's like a fucking Jerry Seinfeld, Ray Romano Joker. <laughs> What's the deal with these scars? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I really like that a lot. I want to see Joker actually tell some fucking jokes. Oh man, you want to hear a joke? What do you get when you put a, a, a guy in society and they're mean and you get what you deserve? <laughs> what do you get when you're society and mean? Yeah, you get in bullets. 
<laughs> bang, bang, Batman. <laughs> bang, bang, Batman. Are they making Joker 2, Return of the Jokester? Yeah, it's called Joker 2, Folie à deux. It has Lady Gaga in it as Harley Quinn, and it's a musical. Really? Like the whole yep. thing? Mm -hmm. The whole thing? I think it's like a musical because both of them are supposed to be like insane. and Yeah. It's huh. like from their perspective. That kind so, of works. Yeah, it's so weird that I'm like, I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of glad you're not just doing Joker 2, uh, Electric Batman. <laughs> Joker 2, <laughs> Electric Batman. Electric Battaloo. I, this is not on topic of this person being deranged. I'm sorry, Dionicus. We'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. Um, but I have made plans for Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer, I like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's much better than Barbie. Oppenby that I've been going by. Yeah, I'm I'm going to the Barbie Oppenheimer double feature, baby, and I am excited. Honestly, I'm kind of more excited for the Barbie movie than I am for Oppenheimer. <laughs> it's just like Oppenheimer, you kind of know what it's going to be. It's like great directing, great shots, great acting. Yeah, the story is not that great to be telling this story again. Uh, let's maybe not look at that in the filmic lens. I really like Killian Murphy a lot. Yeah. That's how you pronounce his name. Killian Murphy. Because I heard some people the other day trying to say that it was Cillian. And I was like, I, do, I really don't think it is. And they were like, yeah, the, the C makes an S sound. And I was like, I think it's Cillian wrong. Murphy. He's from, the, he's from the Mediterranean. What can I say? Sicilian Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, it's Killian Murphy, and those people should not be your friends anymore. Sometimes I listen to Killian Murphy's little uh, sleep time story with the Calm app. Gone from fucking Belfast or Donegal all the way down to fucking Far Fermanagh. And I don't, I don't know where he goes. I'm always asleep five minutes in. So I'm like, you could have just stayed in the station and I'd never know. Maybe that's what you do with your people thinking that you're deranged. Maybe you start making sleep stories. Oh, Dionicus, we're back, baby. We've got a banger. Dionicus, you can start making because uh, your name sounds very good. Greek, I'm assuming. That or I've pronounced it wrong. It's actually Diana, Diana H's. <laughs> it's actually just Diana. And <laughs> just really fucked it up. You can start making cool myths about yourself and legends. And that's, that's like the name of like a Greek god. So I say, if people think you're deranged already, you say you haven't seen anything yet. How do you spell Dionicus? Uh, D-I-O-N... A-C-H-U-S. Well, when I type that in, it auto it wants to autocorrect uh, to Dionychus, which is a uh, like a velociraptor type uh, dinosaur. <laughs> Dude, we got prehistoric questions in here. Oh, that's what you could also do if you want to really lean into the deranged stuff is you just start uh, you just start getting into those realistic dinosaur costumes that they have at like Universal Studios or whatever. You just start going around like. You start like making your own dinosaur sounds. Man, if I wanted to pivot my career, I could be such a good dinosaur. <laughs> I could be such a good dinosaur. Just going around just, yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be so good. <laughs> ah, I found my new calling. <laughs> the I dinosaur that goes around going, ah. Some of them the must have done that. It's the noise that Spencer makes. It sounds exactly like that. He'll get something in his, he'll get some spit caught in his throat and then he'll go, Sounds like a um, toddler. So yeah, Dionicus, it's time to enter your Greek god Velociraptor era. You get a really high quality suit, puppeteer it, get really good. I'm not talking about like, oh, you get it, spend a week learning how it works and then get out there. No, you spend like, you're, you put your 10,000 hours in. You become a master of your craft. You take over the world and then you'll be so good that you can just run into the streets and people will actually think that you're a dinosaur. Although depending on where you live, maybe don't do that because you might get attacked and shot and I don't want to get anybody killed. <laughs> They're out in the dinosaur. They're out in the dinosaur suit running around. I'm the Joker, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Perfect. I want, you need to 
go like full tilt. You need to be like Nicolas Cage Joker or something like that. Yeah, so I I just wanted to be like part of the game and like when you're playing as me, you're like, it's really like me and like you gotta be that kind That's of really energy. Good Nick Cage impression. Thank, thank you. Good. Thank you. I'll tell you, piss blood! <laughs> <laughs> Like, channel, channel Nick Cage, why hasn't he ever been the Joker? That is a fucking crying shame. Him and Willem Dafoe. Oh, man, Willem Dafoe. I really like Willem Dafoe. Yeah, both of them need to be the Joker. Both of them need to come on the podcast. Leak a little. Yeah, get a little leaky. Nick Leak Cage. Oh, I'm not proud geez. of that one. I wish those words didn't come out of my mouth. <laughs> Willem, Willem DeLeak. <laughs> All right. No, it's Willie Defoe. It's oh, right there. Shit. I hate this shit. We have to go. We have to get out of here. I got to hit the gritty real quick. Oh my god, he's literally hitting the gritty with Willem Defoe. <laughs> and with Nicholas Cage. Anyway, Dionychus, I'm sorry. I thought we'd have funnier answers for you on that one, but we kind of uh, went on tangents, and sometimes those are necessary. Sometimes that's just the way it is. These, look, this advice segment is just a vehicle for improv and comedy. It's just an excuse for us to make each other laugh. It's not about you. It's about us. Yeah. And getting me on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Why does your body move like that? Because you gotta like, gotta you gotta like really podcast. get into it. It's the only way I can do it. I can't do it <laughs> normally. I can't just be like, get me on the podcast. It's, you gotta fucking, he's always weird. I love him. Anyway, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have another one. I couldn't find one. I got one. You got one? Hello, Brainy Boys. If you're going to call us anything, I want us to be called the Leakies. The Brainy Boys is kind of cool. What do you prefer? What do you want to be? You be Brain, I'll be Leak. <laughs> okay. Okay. Per and we're the Brain Leak. Uh, that was a Game Grumps reference. I farted a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, this comes in from Sydney. They say, hello, brainy boys. My mom, so my mom sound my, no, it's supposed to be found. My mom <laughs> talks about sounding a lot. <laughs> Me when your mom? My mom found my stash of Satan's grass. How do I explain this to her? Warmest leaky regards, Sydney. Satan's, Satan's cabbage. Little Trump's comb the, over. Uh... Trump's smoking on a <laughs> smoking on a little of that uh, Seth Rogen pubes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, keep going. I want three more. Uh, just uh, smoking on that like curbside stomp. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, that's one. Smoking on that uh, heuristic analysis. Uh huh. Okay, one more. Or smoking on that finger bang, baby. <laughs> smoking on yeah. that finger bang. Whoa. Yeah. Now this uh, weed is fishy. Oh, no, this finger bang is making my head feel like I got curb stomped by the <laughs> devil's bush. <laughs> the, the most horrific high ever. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm getting curb stomped by Satan right now. Oh, dude, I don't like it. <laughs> um, I think you just, uh, you just, you're just like, hey, man, you wanna smoke a quick dube? Yeah, first ask if she wants to share. If she says no, then deny what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna you wanna hit this shit? It's like, no? Oh yeah, me neither. What is that? It's <laughs> so weird. I don't know what that is. Oh, oh. somebody somebody like smoked skunks in my room. That's oh, so there's bizarre. Skunks everywhere. Oh. oh, there's like a skunk came in and like sprayed in my mouth. <laughs> oh god. Jesus Christ. I Jesus, like anyway, that a lot. We got any, like, Pop-Tarts? Oh, uh, I haven't had a Pop-Tart in, in a long time. I could go for a Pop-Tart. Oh, do you think someone has called, like, some of the weed they've made the gritty? So it's like I gotta hit that gritty? Oh, probably. Does it look like I know what I'm doing? Yeah. Cool, because I yeah, don't. You go. <laughs> <coughs> 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 It's the asthma. <laughs> it's the asthma. Oh, Where's my sorry. inhaler? Here's sorry, my guys. inhaler. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. How, uh, how do people the... make? How do you make a bong sound with no liquid? 
Oh, I was about to put I was about to put liquid in my mouth. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, my inhaler, thank God. <laughs> you think Snoop Dogg will come on the podcast? <clears throat> no. Okay. What's his real name? <laughs> oh. I don't know. What is Snoop Dogg's real name? I feel he like probably, it's one that I know. He probably like, I feel like he has like a Calvin. Of, oh, it is Calvin. I knew it. Calvin. Calvin Cordozer Brodus Jr. <laughs> Whoa! Calvin Cordozer Brodus Jr. It's or it's or it's Calvin what? Cordozer Brodus. That is a sick name. And you went with Snoop Dogg. He made it even cooler. He was briefly known as Snoop Lion. Yeah, oh, you don't fuck? remember that? Yeah, the, uh, that but was like a few years ago. It was like a few years ago. What was his catchphrase? Snoop Snoop D O Double G. Was he like, dude, hit this lion's mane with me real quick? Snoop L I O N. <laughs> dude, why the fuck you lying? Why the fuck you lying? Why did Snoop Dogg change his name? His name change ultimately came after he embraced the religion of Rastafarianism on a recent trip to Jamaica. That's why it became Snoop Lion? Yep. Why Why did it become Snoop? Why did it become Snoop Dogg? What's that from? Mm -hmm. That's a cool name. We gotta come up with nicknames. I'm like Sean Jack. It's like Jack Septicai. He's like, meh. Sean Jack. It's like, whatever. Uh, write us in. Yeah. You get to come up with our nicknames. I don't remember what the um question was. Oh, weed in the it's it's everywhere. It's all over the place. <laughs> it's affecting the youths. <laughs> yeah, it just turns into uh, you talking about the legislation <laughs> of weed. Here's what you do. <laughs> you turn this into a teaching moment for your mom. She comes in and she goes, "Um, what is that?" And you go, "Why don't you take a seat?" This is cannabis, and it's really become uh, an issue in uh, today's society. And you have a whole PowerPoint presentation about the pros and the cons of cannabis, and 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 and, and why it was le illegal, and why it is becoming legal, and all of these things. You have a big old presentation, and you can decide for your own self. I I I guess um, if you want uh, it to be more. Uh, promotional of weed or propagandized yeah so you can kind of decide the the direction that you go with it but i think if you turn it into a teaching moment nonetheless um and then you can have a little q a at the end if you want and just any questions oh yeah you in the front row yeah you margaret mm -hmm. yeah only call her by her, her first name um, yeah, so then it's more really official. school her ass. Um, but I think turning it into a teaching moment and turning it into a little project that you can work on, um, I think I think your mother will be impressed and will go, wow, maybe that dank cush ain't so bad after all. This is the dollar store. How good can it be? <laughs> this is my child's bedroom. How good could it be? <laughs> <laughs> I think you start... I mean, I'm coming back to the classic old GL. I'm coming back <laughs> to gaslighting, which is just be like, what is that? Are you smoking weed? And be like, mom, this is grass trimmings. This is from the first summer when I really found out who I am, when I really figured out me as a person. And I got there because of your advice. I love you, mom. And then you go to like hug her. And as you're hugging, you like throw the weed out the window. <laughs> as you're hugging, you take a hit of the weed. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, what you do. Your mom comes in, finds your stash and be like, Richard, what is this? And you're like, I don't know, mom. What is that? And then you call the police on her. Is that a weed? And then you're like, I'm calling the police. <laughs> and then you start typing into your microwave. <laughs> <laughs> And you call the police on your mom, get her ass arrested, then you're fucking emancipated, baby. You can, like, forced emancipation is what we need to do, like South Park. Just without any of the accusations of molestation and uh, getting your parents all to go to jail. 
It's like, get your mom a slap on the wrist. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good for your mom. Then she'll realize how hard the system is on cannabis use, and she'll be like, man, that was kind of fucked up. I don't, why am you I go, advocating for go, the legislation? Yeah, mom, it is kind of fucked up, isn't it? Maybe we should do something about it. <laughs> and then you just blast an air horn, and it just says, like, legalize in colored lights behind you. Mm -hmm. In the weed colors. <laughs> You start, oh, you just tell her that you got it because it's like merch from like trick shot compilations. Like you just saw it, <laughs> you saw it everywhere in trick shot compilations. And you were like, you know what, mom? 360 no scope. You want to see a hit marker? <laughs> <laughs> hit that marker, bitch. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then you ask your mom if she wants to hit it and hot box the room together. Yeah. Go on a vision quest. Make a little hut. <laughs> I've been rewatching Lost, and I just got to the part where uh, where John Locke goes on his little vision quest. Mm. Um, his little side quest. His little side quest, because he's like, do I keep punching the numbers? Do I not? Blah 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 blah. Yeah, blah, you're at the good parts. He he does all the all that all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, what else is going on? Uh, uh, I'm sure Jack is complaining about something. Oh, Jack was just take, taken by the others. Um, uh, oh, you're coming up right to the end of season two then. Uh, I just started season three. Oh, so you saw the hatch explode? Uh-huh, and then Michael and Walt just left after Michael did all of his dirty tricks. Mm. Did you know he was written off the show because he said that the writers were being racist behind the scenes and then they were like, no, we're not, and then wrote him out of the show. <laughs> Yikes. Some lady did a book that was like, she used to help work on Lost. I think she was a writer, but she said that it was like an awful place to be. And it was all about, I, I don't want to get into it now because I just read like cliff notes on an article about it. But it was like Carlton Cuse and Damon Lindelof wrote the show. And Carlton Cuse said something about Mr. Echo where he was like, I wish instead of just killing him, I wish we could hang him, chop off his dick and shove it down his throat. And I was like, Okay, maybe this was not the best place what? to work. Jesus. Um, and then what? Harold Perrineau, who is uh, Michael's actor, he came to them and was like, why is Michael like only talking about Walt being missing once? Like, we don't need uh, more black kids being going missing, and especially like a black dad not like wanting to find his child. Like, we just can't have that stereotype going out there. And they were like, you calling this racist? Watch this. <laughs> and then apparently wrote him out of the show and he was very upset about it. And I didn't know that until like a month ago. And I don't think many people did. Damn. I didn't know that until right now. Yeah, I used to really like Lost. Now I'm like, that takes a lot of the shine off of it. <sighs> that uh, sucks. I did not know that. No. You learn something Me new either. every day. Yeah, it's learn usually something. that somebody else is a racist. Yeah. When they don't do uh, that. <laughs> when they started filming Lost, they filmed it in Hawaii, and I feel like you probably know this, but uh, I guess they obviously they had like the filming permits and everything, but the the town didn't tell any uh, any civilians uh, that uh, it was a movie set, so people were just like nonstop calling nine one one because they saw this plane crash set on a beach and they thought it was all real. It sounds like Lost was the fucking worst thing in the world to work on. <laughs> Just unreal. Anyway, anyway, what a note to end the episode on. <laughs> if you have any uh, advice that you need, um, we'll give you some bad advice. Hit us with some zingers. Yeah, hit us with some zingers. Uh, questions at brainleakpod.com. Yeah, just send us an email there. We'll get it. We'll see it. Will we read it out in the episode? Hmm. You'll never know until next time. Whomst knows. Whomst, Whomst knows. Whomst indeed. Whomst indeed. Well, the next time that we record, we will be in person. Yeah. Isn't that fun? That's very fun. The episode after this one should be in person, and probably the episode after that. Whoa! I'm gonna, uh, uh, I'm gonna Optimus Prime transform into fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we'll see you next time. Thanks for leaking, leakers. And, Thanks for uh, leaking. Follow we'll us. Be... Subscribe. 
Do 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 do. Oh man, it would be so cool to get him on the show. Yeah, but until then, you're just gonna have to stay leaky. Just gonna have to leak all over the place. Nah. We'll see you next time. Farewell. Bye. Uh, God bless you.